do you want to do quick, easy, yet natural looking portrait editing? Have you tried portrait editing before and found it difficult? Or perhaps you're not even sure where to start. Well, in this video, you'll learn how fast and easy it is to use the tools and AI technology inside Luminar Neo to edit your portraits and people photos. You'll be able to watch as I do a complete start to finish portrait edit in just six easy steps. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you want to learn all about photo editing, you're in the right place. So if you're ready, let's get started. This is the portrait I'm going to be using to demonstrate. Here's the before and here's the after. Let me reset it and I'll show you the six steps that I used to create this finished portrait. The first step in any editing workflow is to use develop raw, assuming that you've shot a raw photo. If you didn't shoot raw, where the develop tool here you see says raw, yours will just say develop. But this is always the first tool that I start with. If you have custom profiles for your camera and they are available, you'll find them here. I'm just going to use the Adobe standard because it's neutral in this case. The second thing that I want to do is to make sure that I set the black point and the white point. What that means is when we look at the histogram, that the graph is touching the edge on both sides without clipping. If you want to see the clipping on your image while you're doing that, just press the J key on your keyboard. I have a full keyboard cheat sheet available for Luminar Neo. If you'd like to be able to download that, I'll put a link in the description area below for you. So now I want to just use the curves tool and increase the blacks a little bit until I see some clipping in the dark areas. That way I know that I'm going to have some nice rich black tones in the image. Next, I noticed that his hair is clipping. You can see the red highlight here. That only shows when you have the clipping warnings turned on. Again, you can do that with the J key or you can click the little circles on the histogram. If your histogram's not showing, you could find that in the view menu. So to solve the problem with his hair, I'm just going to bring the highlights down a little bit. I'm going to darken the overall exposure a little bit as well. You'll notice that their faces have gotten a little bit dark, but we'll fix that in a moment. There's just a tiny bit of clipping left, so I'm pretty happy with that. The other thing that I always do in the develop panel is turn on the fixed chromatic aberration and auto defringe. If you're going to add a little bit of sharpness here, I recommend not going too high. I usually go to about 15 and then increase the masking to about 60. The masking slider is key here because the higher you take the masking slider, the less that it will apply to large smooth areas, for example, like their skin. You don't want to add sharpness to skin, especially so for a couple like this. Next, I'm going to adjust the color. The color on this one is a little bit odd. It seems green to me, but if I add magenta, then his face gets too red and the background goes too pink. So this is still in the develop tool, and this is the only place that you will find the white balance sliders. I can try daylight. And if you don't see these options here, if you shot JPEG, you will only see custom and as shot. Okay, so if you shot raw, you will see the presets. Daylight's pretty good, but again, it looks a little bit green to me. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit more magenta and maybe even a little bit more yellow. I'll play with the color a little bit more in step number three. So for now, I'm happy with what's happening here and I'm going to close the develop tool. Step two is to head down to the portrait tools. Scrolling down, you'll find them down here and they are all yellow and orange. I usually like to start with face AI first. Remember how I said their faces were a little bit dark after I darkened the exposure with the develop tool? This is where we can easily solve that problem. Face light is brilliant. You can see as I take it higher, it's like adding a flash or reflector right onto their faces. So I'm gonna leave that one fairly high. 
slim face is one that I really like, but you have to be careful not to go too far. See what it's doing? So I want to flatter them and slim them a little bit, but I still want them to look like themselves. So the key to natural looking portrait editing is not going over the top. Moving down to the next section, we're going to work on the eyes. I recommend always zooming in to 100% when you're working on the face like this so that you can see it more clearly. The sliders that I like to use for eyes are Eye Enhancer. It will bring out the irises and the color nicer. Eye Whitening, but be careful of that one that you don't go too far or you're going to make demon people. Improve Eyebrows will give them some darkness on their eyebrows, dark circles under the eyes. It's going to lighten these circles here under his eyes. I'm going to take it quite high. Red eye removal is if you've used a flash and you have that red circle, which I haven't got here, so I don't need this one. And enlarge eyes is actually quite useful. If you have somebody that tends to squint or their eyes get smaller when they smile because their cheeks are bigger, use the enlarge eyes. I usually take it up to about 20 or so, and it just gives that little bit more pop of their eyes without making it look unrealistic or fake. I'm gonna bring iris flare, and that's adding a light into the bottom of the iris. Imagine you had a reflector below them. It's like they have a reflector at the bottom of their iris here, and then I'm gonna bring this one down a little bit. So let's see what this tool is doing. When you click and hold the eyeball on the tool, it shows the before and after. So see how it's brightening their faces and bringing the sparkle out on their eyes. On the final panel down here, we can also brighten and whiten the teeth. That does a nice job. Darken lips, and if you want to add a little bit of color to the lips. Be careful when you have a group or a couple like this because lip darkening and adding redness, of course, is going to apply to the man too. So it may look like he has lipstick. So be careful of that, or you could also mask it off of his lips if you don't want it to apply to him. But this looks pretty good. She doesn't usually wear makeup or a lot of makeup, so this is still natural looking. Again, you don't want to go over the top to make it not look like them anymore. Closing face AI, I'm going to move to the next one, skin AI. This is where you'll do the skin smoothing or softening. So the amount slider controls the amount of softening of the skin. Notice if I take it all the way up, their skin is quite a bit smooth. You still see some texture though. And that's what I love about this slider in Luminar Neo is you can take it all the way and you still have detail and texture in the skin but I wouldn't go quite this far because it's not realistic for people of a certain age. So I'm gonna to go to about 65. Shine removal is great if you have any shine on the forehead. See how it's picking up a little bit of shine here on her forehead. So I'm gonna bring that up a little bit higher and you can check off skin defects removal AI. It will attempt to automatically remove things like blemishes, or cuts from shaving, that sort of thing. You see, it is removing some of the spots on his forehead, which I think is more flattering. If you're not happy with it, you can also mask it. I think it's doing a pretty good job. I'll clean this up a little bit later with the erase tool. Closing skin AI, I'm going to open body AI. Now this one, I want to view the full image. This one will attempt to slim your people. When you go to the right, it's going to try and squish them in or slim them a little bit. When you have two people like this though, you may end up with a bit of a challenge because you see what it's doing? It's slimming him, but making her wider. So that's not something that she's going to want. But there's a simple fix for that. All I have to do is mask it and using the erase brush, just erase it off of her. So I will just make sure that she stays slimmer. Now you could see that it's tucking him in over here. Oh, I missed a part right there. So it's tucking him in. You can see I missed another part. Make sure you get all the bits. And it's actually twisting his chin over a bit. So I wanna erase that as well. 
I don't want his face to be moving. That looks better. Can you see how I've masked it to just apply to him? And it's stretching the background over to match. Now there's one last tool in the portrait set. So step two is basically all of these portrait tools here with the exception of high key. If you want to use that one, I leave it as optional. I don't use it on every portrait. The last one I'm going to use is the portrait bokeh AI. To apply it, just drag the amount up. Then you just have to wait and you'll see it mask the image and the background will become blurry. With the sliders down below here, you have control of the background. We can darken it, we can warm it up or cool it down. So cooler means more blue and warmer means more yellow. In this case, adding more yellow gives more of those nice fall colors in the background. Depth correction means that the blur is going to come closer to them if I slide this to the left. So it's going to include this tree a bit more. I'm going to go a little more to the left. Now we need to do a little bit of mask correction. You can see that there's something odd happening on his arm here and also his hair. So you have control over how this works. I want to make sure to get his head in focus. So I just need to do a little bit of work on the mask. He's painted in so it's focused and then come closer and do a little defocus on the outer one. I have another video showing you how to use this tool. It's from when we had Luminar AI, but the tool works exactly the same. I'll put a link to that in the description area below for you. So once you get the mask and you're happy with it, then I suggest dialing the amount down. So I usually increase the amount a lot so I can see where it's going and then dial it back somewhere to usually around 30% or so. Can you see what it's doing? There's before Portrait Boca and after. I think I'm going to darken the background just a little bit more and give it a little bit of highlight glow, which will just make these leaves sparkle a little bit. Now it's time to move on to step three, which is adjusting the color. Remember I said the color on them was a little bit odd. If you open the color tool, you'll find a slider that says remove color cast. I love this slider because whenever I find an image like this that just has an odd tint and I can't get rid of it or I can't balance it, this slider I find does a really nice job. If I go to extremes, you see that it's removing the red. So I'm not going to go too far. I just want to fix the color on them a little bit. Once I'm in here, I can also adjust the brightness. So I can use orange to brighten their faces a bit more. Most skin tones contain some amount of orange. So being in the luminance section and increasing orange will brighten faces. Make note that it's also brightening the leaves in the background. I'm also going to brighten red because you'll notice that he's got quite a bit of red in his face. As well, I'm going to go to saturation and desaturate the red a tiny bit. That will help take out the rosiness out of his cheeks. We can also shift the hues a little bit more. I still find that her face is a little bit green, so I'm going to shift the orange just a tiny bit towards the left to give it a little bit more pink and likewise with the yellows. I can also saturate the blues and give her shirt a little bit more color. Let's see a before and after of this tool. To see what it's doing, it's affecting their skin tones, the clothes, and the background at the same time. Of course, if you don't want it to apply to the background and you only want it to apply to the subjects, you can use the AI masking and just choose human. Once Luminar has analyzed the image for mask AI, I'm just going to choose human. And now you can see that this effect is only going to apply to them. So now when we do the before and after, you see that it's correcting their color without affecting the leaves in the background. Now, if I want to affect the leaves, I can close this tool and then just open it again and do the opposite. So let's say I want to darken the leaves a little bit. So I'm going to lower the orange luminance, red, yellow, and green. 
Green actually does a really nice job of deepening these trees in the background. Then I'm going to lower the saturation of the orange just a tiny bit. Now we can do the opposite. So we can do mask AI again. And here's the trick. Choose human and then just go to mask actions and invert it. Now it's only applying to the background. So you can see that it's only affecting the leaves. Now we're ready for step four, which is add an edge vignette. The vignette tool is the last one in the essentials section. Open the vignette tool and just darken it by taking the amount slider to the left. What I recommend is to see the vignette and be able to place it easier is to dial the feather all the way down to zero. Now you can adjust the size and the shape and choose subject to place the vignette exactly where you want it. So I'm going to center it around them like so. Once you get it where you want it and you're happy with the size and the shape, just take the feather back up to about 50 or higher. Then finally adjust the amount. So I usually take the amount further than I'm going to go in the final version, just so that it's easier to see it, it's more visible. Then once you get it where you want it, you have it nicely feathered, adjust the amount. In this case, I think minus 56, somewhere in there, looks good. See how that's darkening the edges around them? Maybe not quite so dark, something like that. When you darken the edges like this, it forces the viewer's eye to come in to them because they are brighter. Your eye is naturally drawn to things which are the sharpest. Hopefully your subject is in sharp focus. Things that have most contrast. Again, try and keep that away from being in the background. The brightest area of the picture. Again, I hope that's the subject. And areas of bright and intense color, which is why I darkened and dialed the colors down a bit in the background. I have another little bonus trick to show you about making a custom vignette, even more custom than this, when you're doing portraits. I'll show you that one at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around till the end. Before I move on to step five, I haven't really included this as one of the steps. You can crop your image if you choose. This one is actually pretty well cropped already. I might come in just a little bit closer to them like so. Now we're ready for step five, which is the glow tool. I actually really like the glow tool. It's normally down here under the creative tools, but I've added it to my favorites. If you want to add any tools to your favorites, just select them. For example, vignette, right click it and choose add to favorites. And it will appear at the top under the favorites section. If you don't see that, you probably haven't added any favorites or it's closed up. Just click the little triangle to expand it. So glow is one of my favorites as well. I use this one a lot on portraits to soften the overall look. Cameras are so detailed these days that it actually captures so much detail and crispness in the face that it's not flattering for people. So I like to add a little bit of softness. In the glow tool, you actually have four choices, soft focus, glow, Orton Effect and Orton Effect Soft. One of my favorites is the Orton Effect. It actually comes from an old film technique where you took two different slides, one that was in focus and one that was out of focus and put them together. And they're using this kind of look with the Orton Effect. When you drag it up, you get this beautiful glow. I do find that it tends to brighten the image I'm just gonna check my clipping warnings again. So I'm going to turn the brightness back down to compensate for the Orton effect adding the brightness and then just dial it in to the amount that I like, usually around 25 for me. Then you can adjust the other sliders to taste and to fit the image that you're working on. That's before Orton effect and after. Try the other ones as well. I find soft focus for me is a little bit more contrasty and actually on this image it works quite well too. Orton Effect Soft doesn't have as much punch as the other two and Glow makes the highlights of the picture glow. So you'll notice that if I increase this it's his hair and the bright parts of their face that are glowing and that's generally not what I want in a portrait. 
So usually I'm choosing between Orton Effect and Soft Focus. In this case, I actually like the Soft Focus and it makes a nice warm look. If we want to adjust the color, you can make them even warmer or cooler here as well. I think cooler actually works to balance some of that odd color even further. So this is doing a really nice job on this image. Step six is our final step in this process. And then we have some optional things that I'll show you as well that you can apply as final enhancements. But I leave till the end any erasing or cloning that I need to do. In this case, I want to erase the logo off of his shirt and it is just a bit distracting. So I'm gonna use the erase tool and just remove it. It should be fairly straightforward. If you are Canadian, you may recognize that logo as a Saskatchewan Rough Riders football club logo. And I'm from Alberta and I chair for Edmonton. So I wanna get rid of the Saskatchewan logo as well. A little private joke. This is actually my sister and brother-in-law, my husband's sister and her husband. Finally, I'm going to use the cologne tool. Even though the portrait tools did a great job on lightening the dark circles under his eyes, I'm gonna use the clone tool to lighten them even further. So to do that, dial the strength down quite low. I'm gonna use about 20% and I'm gonna get a smaller brush. Then to set the source, I'm clicking just below where I'm gonna clone, even smaller brush, and then just do one swash of cloning. Then I'm gonna do one more over here. So there's the before cloning and after. I'm also gonna clean up this little spot over here. That looks really good. So my general rule of thumb when I'm doing portrait editing in terms of softening versus removing, anything that is a permanent fixture on their face should be softened and not removed. So that means scars, wrinkles, moles. Anything that is temporary, such as a blemish, a mosquito bite, sunburn, or even razor burn on men, is okay to remove. So keep those tips in mind as you're doing your portrait editing. Totally optional, if you want to add a cinematic look or a different style to your image, apply a lot using the mood tool, or you could even convert it into black and white. For this one, I applied a lot. This one just enhances the color and the contrast, and it works nicely with the tones that are already in the image. One thing I will give you as another bonus tip is to save your edits as a preset. To do that, you can simply go to the bottom here and choose save as a preset, and then give it a name. So I'll call mine fall portrait. The only thing that you want to be careful of when saving a preset is that if you've done any masking, like I did earlier on a couple of the tools, that will apply when you apply this preset as well. So just be aware of that. Now, if I have other images from this same photo session, I can quickly and easily apply the same look and edits to them with one click using this preset. If you're enjoying this video and you want more step-by-step -step instructions on how to use Luminar Neo, check out my course, Luminar Neo The Complete Course. There are actually two lessons available for free for you to preview to see if you enjoy it. I'll put a link to how you can watch those in the description area below for you. Do you remember I promised earlier to give you a bonus tip if you stuck around to the end? Well, here it is. If you wanna do an extra custom vignette to darken everything around your subject except their faces, we can use the portrait tools, specifically Face AI and the Face Light slider. So I'm going to drag this one to the right quite high so we can really see its effect. Let's go 80. Next, go back to the Develop tool and we're going to darken the overall exposure until we get the brightness of their faces to be correct. In this case, minus 0.4 seems to do the job. I might bring the highlights down just a bit as well. If you want to see what this little trick is doing, let's just go to the Edit tab, and I'm just going to go back two steps. So if I close the last two tools that I just applied, and we go back to the Mood step, see the difference? The background and their clothing is much brighter. 
when I go to the final step, see how their faces stand out a lot more and everything else has been minimized. So it doesn't matter what else is in the picture, as long as you have people, this little trick will work. I have another whole video demonstrating just this one little tip. There's a link to that video in the description area below for you. If you're brand new to Luminar Neo or you haven't decided whether or not to get the extensions yet, I recommend getting the annual pro plan, which includes all of the extensions. If you opt for that, make sure you use my discount code DPM-NEO to get a small discount. If you want more Luminar Neo learning here on YouTube, watch this video now. Remember to give this one a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single thing. Until next time, take care and we'll see you soon.